Welcome to Pub Travels. Here we are again in our fermentation place. Um, I like to keep a fermentation station going. Um, usually I try to ferment something every week so that I do a two week ferment and we're taking something down, we're putting something up. We're taking some down, putting something up. So we've done a variety of things. We've done habanero, jalapeno, a couple other combinations. And as I'm getting more and more involved in this in the last couple of months, the more and more combinations I want to try. So this is a total out of the box. Couldn't find anything on the internet. I happen to have, I, I bought a big, big, big bag of morita chiles. Morita chiles are one of my favorite chiles. They smell so good. They taste just absolutely amazing. They are a smoked jalapeno, but not smoked as long as a chipotle. So chipotle is a jalapeno that's been smoked a little bit longer. So morita chiles, beautiful, beautiful, dark smoked color. Sorry, against my black gloves, you can't really see how dark and beautiful they are. How about we do that? But gorgeous color and the aromatic to me is absolutely unbelievable because I've never seen chipotles in a dried state. So I've read a couple of articles also that say that chipotles are moritas, but they're in the arbol sauce. So I don't know, we'll have to figure that out. You've got Google, I've got Google, we'll figure it out. But in any event, um, as far as smoking them, the, the research that I've done, the uh, moritas are smoked less than a chipotle. So the other part of this wacky experiment is I've also read that Thicker skinned chilies are hard to ferment. And moritas, you can see that. I mean, they're 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 like raisins kind of. They're you can see the seeds in there. But they're a kind of a tough skinned chili, which is why you want to rehydrate them when you use them. Okay? But I'm going to experiment and see if we can ferment dried morida chilies. So we're gonna go with this. I've got my jar full. You can see there's a lot of air gaps because the, the chilies themselves are kind of big. A lot of, there's a lot of air gaps. Um, might be a little bit tricky. I might have to pay a little bit more attention to it over the first couple of days till we can smash down the chilies uh, to get all that air out. You want to make sure there's no oxygen, there's no anything that can cause an unwanted bacteria. And super simple. So I've got a two and a half percent brine and we want to get as much as we can in there and then as we get closer to the top what we're going to do we're using pretty much all of this. We're getting close, but there's still some room. Now, as the morita chiles rehydrate, they're probably going to take in a lot of the liquid, but we want to make sure that we have everything covered to begin our ferment. So I found this cool tamper tool at our local Asian market, and I'm just going to push down. I want to make sure we get as much air out of there as possible. All of it would be nice. And we're smashing down our morita chiles. Okay. And we're going to let that kind of, we'll roll with that for the moment. So we're going to take this uh, weight, it's a glass weight, and we're going to just set it in. And I'm going to push down until 
I can see all the brine coming up and over so that everything underneath is covered. We're going to monitor this one because it's a dried chili. The dried chili might actually absorb a lot of that moisture uh, to, to rehydrate, which is cool. And then we might have to actually add a little bit more liquid to it tomorrow, possibly the following day. I think the first 24 to 48 hours are the most critical to make sure you've got everything protected to not um, grow bad bacteria. Um, we've got these tops found on the internet, really cool for fermenting. Uh, these are really cool. I've actually used them for just the most recent two or three ferments I've done, and they work out really, really well. So you can do this with just a regular lid. So we've covered what we're fermenting in the brine. So the brine is doing its job. We can do the regular ball jar, lid, ball jar, mason jar. Now, what you're going to have to do is probably once to twice a day, likely twice a day, just make sure that the gases release. So let it go, put it back on, and you got to do that every day for your ferment. We're looking for, we're shooting for a 14 day ferment, but we're not 100% sure how the skin is going to break down on the morita chili. So, since I have this pretty cool tool, found these, you can find them online. Uh, it's got a little date thing, like you can actually put like the date you started your ferment on, which is cool, so you can track it. You want a seven day ferment, 14 day ferment, 30 day ferment, whatever. Um, you can set it for whatever day and then go for two or three months. I mean, there are a lot of fermentation periods that we work with. So we just put this back on, nice and snug. And there is a tool. So these lids come with this tool, which is kind of neat. It comes out on the top here, secure it. And then you can actually pull, I don't know if you can see it on camera. I'll try to bring it a little bit closer, but you can see the bubbles up on top. If you pull up all those bubbles, that's the air we actually want out of this ferment. So I'm going to go until I actually get a little bit of liquid coming out of here. Uh, that means, uh, to me, that tells me I've got as much air, oxygen that I can get out possible. But you can see, and you can kind of hold it, you can, you can feel the tension. And I can feel that it's getting closer, but it's getting harder and harder to pull up because now you're creating that vacuum that is pulling all of the air bubbles out and you're going to be left with nothing but what you're trying to ferment and the brine. You've got your weight holding everything down, keep it underneath the brine. And you can still see some of those bubbles coming up. And like we talked about just a few minutes ago, because there's the uh, morita chili uh, is a little bit more bulky, I guess you can say, in this jar, I might have to revisit this um, process one more time, maybe two more times over the next 24, 48 hours. But you can see here, as I'm pulling, it's harder and harder to pull, so we're getting as much air out of there as possible and this is actually pretty good so there's not much left you can even tap it shake it a little bit make sure you have all those bubbles out a lot of bubbles looking really good and we're just pulling that out
All right, so what I'm gonna do here, I, I'm getting a little bit of the, uh, the brine is coming up through this little pump. Let it go. And yeah, you can definitely see I've pulled up some of that liquid. So now it's time to let, let it rest a little bit for the next 24 hours or so. And you can, you can hear that actually, we released a little bit of gas. So this, this part here, that's what releases any of the carbonation, if you will, um, the gases that develop from the fermentation. So this is a really cool fermentation jar top because you really don't, you really don't have to do much, but monitor the, the liquid that comes out. So I always put a, uh, I put something underneath it so that as sometimes the liquid will come out as the gases are coming out, but you're also taking out the moisture of whatever you're fermenting. In this case, we're a rehydrating a Morita Chile. So we're going to, like I said in the beginning, total experiment on this one. But I love the Morita Chile. So I want to try it. Let's see what we can do. If we can ferment it and make it a little bit more healthy, a little bit more nutritious. I know it's going to be delicious because anything that has Morita Chile in it is delicious. And we're going to ferment it. It's got to be delicious, right? All right. Cross my fingers. Things are going to go really well. All right. So I'm just going to let this roll. Kind of shaking this up a little bit. And I've gotten most of the air out of there. You can tell because now I'm spilling it. Got nothing but Morita Chiles and our 2.5% brine. Let's ferment. <laughs> 